It's the mid-afternoon of September 11th, 1777 at our Battle of Brandywine. With the British now squarely across the creek over multiple fords, you have advised George Washington to keep his eye on the prize, the all-important road to Philadelphia, and to ignore General Sullivan's desperate calls for aid at Birmingham Hill. Nathaniel Greene's plan, which you have now adopted, is to disengage from Chad's Ford and send half of the Continental Army directly to Dilworth. Here, they can anchor a new defensive line to block the British path to Philadelphia and keep Washington's entire army from being cut off. General Sullivan will be ordered to disengage as best he can, uniting their force at the crossroads of Dilworth. Green immediately puts the plan into motion. His men are already formed up into long, snaking columns ready to march. Gary, playing the role of Washington in today's war game, keeps a close eye on their progress. So just real quick, sir, did these guys move already? Yes. Okay, and have these guys moved? Yes. Okay. So these guys are all being moved towards... I like this, but what if I were to push for something that envelops them a little bit more and puts more pressure on them? The British have only a token force present at Chad's Ford. Ed orders his regiments forward to try and interdict the rebel withdrawal, but he lacks the manpower to make a meaningful push. Despite some heavy skirmishing, General Greene's march is off to a good start. But over at Birmingham Hill, things are a bit dicier for Sullivan. Howe, Cornwallis, Niephausen, and over 12,000 British troops are on the field, attempting to encircle and pinch off the rebels. Earlier in the afternoon, a British cavalry charge was repulsed by the stout resistance of the Maryland regulars. But our British players are undeterred. Well, it's been a tough four hours of fighting. Uh, the problem we have is that it seems like these colonials have a lot of trees, and it really disrupts my parade formation. Um, I'm having difficulty getting my weight of numbers in against the Colonials. Um, we've been trading volley fire back and forth with each other, but we're pretty much giving as, better, as much as we take. Um, we had a really good cavalry charge uh, in the front and the rear of a Colonial unit that was actually in kind of like a lane, and I have no idea how Miles blew that. Um, but uh, it was repulsed, and uh, they're still standing. Uh, they're they're kind of like this like thorn in the middle of that board. Uh, so hopefully they will be removed. Earlier in the battle, recall that Washington did personally supervise a division marching to Sullivan's relief. So at least some reinforcements are on the field. Just not quite as many as Sullivan had hoped. By 3.30 p.m., it's clear that the British are pressing too hard for Sullivan to simply disengage on his own. He's in the thick of a ferocious action, his men selling their lives dearly. Since okay. you're taking the initiative, you declare your charges first. Okay. And yes. these gentlemen are going to come in here and hit this unit, right? Yes, General. All right. And I'll do my closing fire. I get four bases here. I'm gonna say maybe two bases from that one. The rules we're using for today's war game are called Live Free or Die. You can find them on our website, LittleWarsTV.com. When a regiment is charged, as is happening right now between Miles and Gary, the defender can unleash a hasty volley, rolling one six-sided die per base in the regiment. And a base in this scenario equates to about 75 men. Every die roll of five or six inflicts a hit on the enemy. And when a regiment suffers five hits, they have to remove an entire base as a casualty and take a morale test. Suffice it to say, Sullivan's troops have been taking a lot of morale tests today. While his men fight for survival to delay the British, the leading elements of Nathaniel Greene's column finally arrive on the Dilworth table. They've won the race to the crossroads, which will ensure that the American army has a line of retreat protected to Philadelphia. But the question is, just how much of the American army will be left after this battle. Because back at Birmingham Hill, the situation has gone from bad to worse. Miles, playing as General Cornwallis, drives a wedge into the center of the battlefield, splitting off Sullivan from Washington's reinforcements. With Sullivan completely encircled, Cornwallis urges his grenadiers and best troops forward to push Washington from the high ground of Birmingham Meeting House. After a short, sharp contest, the rebels are driven back with relative ease. Live Free or Die is a rule set that rewards troop quality and training, and Washington's reserves are just no match for the cream of the British Army. 
Only now is it clear that John Sullivan and his five brigades, some 8,000 men, are well and truly doomed. Washington has no choice but to fall back to Dilworth without Sullivan, ending any hope of saving this half of the army. But Washington isn't the only one showing up at the crossroads. General Charles Gray's brigade, led by Ed, has pursued Green's column to Dilworth and now also appears on the tabletop. But when it becomes clear how heavily outnumbered he is, Ed chooses not to push the attack. Finally, at long last, dusk begins to settle over Brandywine, and as it did historically, the darkness saves what is left of Washington's army. The road to Philadelphia is secure, but the cost is nothing short of staggering. Washington has lost 40% of his army, with five brigades surrounded and trapped. Had something like this happened in 1777, it would have been a crippling blow that would truly have changed the entire course of the revolution. Let's just say, thanks to you, we might be drinking a lot more tea in the colonies these days. Well fought. Well, the casualties were quite limited. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think we will uh, enjoy wintering in Philadelphia. I do, too. Uh, I, I think hear you'll the... enjoy it as well, sir. You might want to tone the lads down with the uh, looting and plundering. <laughs> In this ending, I can only say, I know we preserved our retreat back to Philadelphia and we pre preserved that road to Philly, but I mean, my army's in shambles. Eric, I think your army was obliterated right off the battlefield. I don't know what good the road to Philadelphia does us if we only have, you know, a thousand soldiers against a mighty British force to hold it, right? Exactly. I'd like to just thank everybody who's watching, who's, who's engaged with this experience, because let me tell you, I hope you have the opportunity to do it sometime yourself, whether it be little tiles on the board or miniatures, um, do it if you can, and then take what you learned out to battlefields. We got to play this game on land that was preserved, 10.5 acres, by the members and supporters of the American Battlefield Trust, which made it extra meaningful. That's my take. Uh, does this have any sort of application in the classroom, Eric? Yes, yeah, especially now, you know, just as everything's changing. Kids just don't want to learn about these battles and these old history textbooks and things like that. So any other alternative methods we can use to help educate on these battles I think is really beneficial for the students. Making things relevant to students and getting them engaged is the key. And that's one thing. I mean, we're shooting a video right now, but this is something you guys both do in the classroom as well, right? Yeah, we just want to thank Little Wars TV and uh, Battlefield Trust for having us here. It's absolutely an honor for Eric and I to be here. And so if you get an opportunity, check us out on Bobblehead George and um, take a little adventure with us on the way. I'll second that. Uh, I'm a big fan of your channel, and I'm a big fan of Little Wars TV channel as well, so check them all out. Click subscribe to any of those channels you go to, and we think you'll be happy with what you see.